During the Second World War, soldiers bled, froze, and broke bones in places where no doctor, no hospital, and, well, no morphine could reach them. Frontline medics had to improvise, not with chemicals from a lab, but with what they could pull from the earth, trees, and field kits. What most people don't realize is that in the chaos of battle, a natural painkiller formula quietly became a lifeline. It wasn't glamorous, it wasn't clean, and it didn't come in a bottle. But it worked. It was passed in whispers between medics, nurses, and resistance fighters, a blend that numbed wounds, reduced swelling, and kept men alive until evacuation. This was the war's secret painkiller, a field-made remedy that rivaled morphine when there was none to be found. Now we're going to uncover that formula, trace its roots through forgotten field manuals and first-hand accounts, and show exactly how this method can still work today. For survivalists, bush doctors, and anyone serious about learning what real field medicine looked like when everything went to hell. By 1942, both Axis and Allied medical units were suffering severe shortages of morphine and ether. The solution had to come from local resources. British and Commonwealth medics stationed in Burma and North Africa turned to traditional herbal knowledge. American soldiers in the Pacific learned from local healers how to extract anti-inflammatory and numbing compounds from plants. The core of this field remedy was a mixture made from willow bark, clove oil and alcohol, often high-proof rum or medicinal spirits. Willow bark contains salicin, the same compound that led to the creation of aspirin. Clove oil provided eugenol, a natural anaesthetic still used in dentistry today. Alcohol acted as both a solvent and disinfectant. Together, this crude but potent mix formed a field-ready painkiller that could dull pain, clean wounds, and fight infection. It wasn't perfect, and honestly, it tasted terrible. But for a soldier who had lost half a leg or taken shrapnel to the arm, it was, well, a miracle that could be made on the spot. Field notes from the Burma campaign describe how medics stripped willow bark from young branches, scraped away the outer layer, and then boiled the inner bark in water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once cooled, it was strained through cloth, and if you were lucky, a few drops of clove oil were stirred in. In more desperate times, cloves were simply crushed directly into the brew. And if there happened to be spirits on hand, a small amount was added to preserve the mixture and, you know, increase absorption. Applied as a compress, it was used to treat bullet wounds, bayonet cuts and infections. Drunk in small doses, it calmed fevers and dulled the agony of fractures. It wasn't morphine, but it did allow men to move fight, or at the very least, crawl to safety. Some French resistance fighters in 1944 were even documented using similar blends with local herbs like meadow sweet and yarrow, both known for their pain-relieving and anti-inflammatory effects. In modern survival terms, this same method still works. The key is, you know, understanding ratios and timing. Boil two handfuls of fresh inner willow bark in about a litre of water until the liquid darkens. Strain it, let it cool, and if you have it, add a teaspoon of clove oil. For a stronger tincture, mix equal parts of the cooled tea and high-proof alcohol, then seal it in a small bottle. The alcohol preserves it for months and allows topical or oral use. This wasn't folk magic, 
It was chemistry meeting desperation. Salicin from willow bark converts to salicylic acid in the body, which lowers inflammation and pain, just like aspirin. Clove oil's eugenol desensitizes nerve endings and kills bacteria, making it ideal for numbing toothaches and small wounds. When combined, they targeted both pain and infection, two of the deadliest conditions on the battlefield. These ingredients acted faster than expected because wartime medics prepared them fresh. The natural enzymes were still active, and the hot extraction made them more bioavailable. Even today, modern research backs the effectiveness of both compounds. For a survivalist, this isn't about nostalgia. It's about, well, knowing what works when the pharmacy is a thousand miles away. If you're training for wilderness medicine or, you know, long-term grid-down survival, this knowledge is more than just a curiosity. It's really a skill. Pain control, honestly, is one of the hardest parts of remote care. Learning to identify willow trees, wild cloves, or allspice, if you need a substitute. And, well, keeping a small store of high-proof ethanol could make the difference between functioning through pain or, frankly, collapsing from it. You can actually test the principle right now. Just find a patch of willow. Look for those long, flexible branches and silver-green leaves. Then peel a few strips of the inner bark, dry them, and store them in a sealed jar. The next time you strain a muscle or, say, have a headache, brew yourself a cup of that tea. It won't knock you out like morphine, but you'll feel its slow, steady relief. And you know, that's the very same relief soldiers felt 80 years ago when nothing else was available. What makes this story worth remembering isn't just the chemistry, it's the grit. You see, these medics weren't pharmacists. They were improvisers under fire, pulling miracles from mud and leaves. Their knowledge bridged the gap between science and survival, and, honestly, their methods are still the backbone of field medicine today. So, when we talk about the Second World War's secret painkiller, we're really talking about human ingenuity, the drive to heal, even when everything else is well, falling apart. Every survivalist, historian or field medic owes a nod to those unknown hands that kept men alive using bark, oil and sheer determination. If you've made it this far, you've just uncovered one of the most practical forgotten survival formulas from the Second World War, a real working method that frankly deserves a place in every serious survivalist toolkit. These lessons from the past aren't relics. They're reminders that survival starts with knowledge, not equipment. If you value this kind of deep historical insight, real wartime methods, field-tested remedies and lost survival tactics, then subscribe to Warfield Survival right now. And do share this with someone who's as serious about history as you are. Every week we bring back another piece of forgotten ingenuity, and together we keep that knowledge alive.